Hi guys and uh, uh, welcome to this special video. This one is very straightforward. One, I hope you like the new intro that I've changed um, just to reflect all the Home Center 3 stuff and all the work that I've been carrying out. So that's all the stuff that you can actually do with uh, home automation and those uh, pictures just show some of the stuff that I've actually done in the last few months. Um, what I'm going to show you next is the video of the project that we did in uh, in Manchester. Um, it's fully done, automated. That's the work that I've been carrying out last few months and uh, hope you enjoy it. And any questions, put in the comment sections if you want stuff doing like that to your house uh, or need help uh, in programming, just uh, feel free to contact me via email, WhatsApp, Skype, etc. Uh, leave comments and then uh, I can do the same for you. So um, thanks for watching and uh, hope you uh, enjoy the next part. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Right, hello and uh, welcome to the video you've been waiting for. So this is the project I've been working on for the last six, seven, eight months um, throughout the lockdown period and it's taken a while due to the fact that we had to work very safely with all the other tradesmen. Um, but here's the sneak preview of the um, the pictures you saw when I put them on and I'll be getting some more pictures later on but at the moment while it's nice and light I thought I'd get you some pictures so here's a property and you can see we've got some uh, lighting done sirens cameras and of course here we've also got the uh, Fibaro intercom and um, which is quite a pretty decent device um, a little bit on the expensive side but it does do a great job um, what we've also got some cameras over here which because it's a Fibaro product we can actually interlink the whole thing together and what it does is every time somebody presses the doorbell not only can we uh, the client talk to them through the uh, through the apps either the iPad app or the uh, iPhone app they can actually take an automatically take a picture of them and send them to their emails so that's how that works. All these sensors that we've got here are all in linked with Fibaro. So we've got traditional sensors to keep in keep with the, uh, the property and the design and the aesthetics um, as there's no suitable Fibaro alternative. And little floodlights here like we've got there at the top. And all of them are now connected to Fibaro modules, which then provide our security for the property as well. So just like normal, motion is detected the lights will turn on, but at the same time, we can also photo take uh, photos to users, have our notifications sent to our mobile phone, turn on uh, a number of lights inside, outside, depending on conditions that we can uh, we preset. Right, now we're gonna be going inside. So first thing we're gonna start off with the intercom as it just follows through. So here's the iPad that they have uh, embedded in the wall and it's permanently on with the intercom which means that basically anybody who comes to the front door they'll be able to view straight away without any problems it doesn't switch off like with other camera apps on tab format and if once they get their gates installed they've actually got a couple of buttons here which will end up uh, opening the gates you have two outputs here on the relay system and they can all get wired in once everything is done so even before they can uh, in ring the doorbell they can actually see them on there if they're out and about, the iPhone app will um, ring just like the other doorbells do for you to get a signal and um, answer the phone and speak to them. Right, the first thing we're going to come to is the keypad for the alarm system. So they've decided to opt for a traditional keypad just as well as using the mobile phone. And we operate this using the um, either a key code, which we can input, or um, swiping a tag which will then deactivate the alarm to enable the alarm it's just a simple button press and that turns the alarm on now this property has actually got a couple of um, these keypads and what they've done is we've uh, cleverly designed it so that this one operates the full house alarm whereas the one upstairs only operates a night alarm so that way they don't get confused and it's easy for anybody, all members of the family to operate without having to think, oh, how many times do I have to press a button or which mode do I use? select the mode, etc. So as we proceed, 
Um, we've got the uh, underfloor heating stats um, all on here, all Z-Wave controlled, so we can set them up, turn them on and off, all through Fibaro. And these are the um, switches that control the um, lights for the fan, toilet, etc. But that's only if you want to override them. However, we have set up uh, motion activation once I walk in and where the lights turn on automatically and they'll remain on while motion is being detected and will auto switch off after a set period of time. So we here, we have our kitchen dining areas, which is basically the, the, the centerpiece of the house, so to speak. And it's like a large kitchen dining area and with uh, quite a few lighting zones here. So what we do, we have the top three as physical lighting, bottom three, physical lights, but these two control um, what we know through scene activations or run little scenes and to control other lights. So if we start by clicking the first light on, there and off. Now we can click the middle section and then off. And of course the third section which is just far corner over there. And turn off. And then coming forward, the other three control this kitchen area. And we've got the pendant area. And of course, these are what's called the pencil lights, which are these um, Perhaps if I turn them on, which are these little lights there, just these little lights there and these just over there, but we're just waiting for the glass panel to be fitted. So these little tiny little pencil lights, which uh, give a nice little effect um, just under the, uh, on the wall units. We also have island lights, strip lighting in the island. Now, because we can't get physical switches for that, we've done it as a scene control. So the, uh, the top right hand button, when we click it once, we'll turn it on. I don't know if you can see that clearly there, because it's quite light here. So let me turn it to another colour. So you can just about see that over there, but I'll turn it to a different colour. So that was one click was turning it on, and the other click will turn it off. But if I click it twice, or three times, it'll be a preset colour. So here, again, I don't know how clear it is, but that's the... Their preset colours were red and green, so that's red and green on these uh, particular lights. So rather than having to get your phone out all the time, it, we have defined it in the scene and uh, we can change that any time by just uh, allocating a different colour to it. Now same again with the, uh, with the second button, which is just here. So there you can see the glowing effect on the ceiling and of course the uh, the island itself. And if we do, I think it's triple, is for green, I think. Yeah. And we've got the triple effect to get the green lighting effect. And of course, double was red on this particular one. But the other feature I really wanna show you is this. So while this is all green, and then somebody, we decide to open the drawers to look at some utensils, it auto changes to white so we can they can actually have white light instead and it, so any of these drawers here that are opened becomes white but as soon as the drawer closes it switches back to its previous color and this actually works on both sides so in between if you change colors on this uh, unit it will um, automatically switch back to uh, the color that's been preset so same with this side so if we just open one of the little cover doors and it goes to white, close it and it will just go back to its previous um, color state that it was in. And if you happen to change the color whilst these doors are open, it will actually read the new color and change into that. So that it's always going to be perfectly in sync with each other. Of course, you've still got independent control of these strips for the top section and the bottom section if you wanted, um, which isn't an issue. So that's this area. Now we're gonna go over to the cinema room. Right, now we're entering the cinema room. So this is a, a room dedicated just to watching uh, TV movies, etc. So it's like a typical room. We've got speakers in the ceiling, 7.1 uh, TV, etc. amplifier. 
and um, we've got the wall switches here now we've got a three gang switch two of those which control your standard lights so one here and we've got the other one here so typically you probably want something like that to watch telly in but let's do some magic if we hit this button here like so what happens is it starts closing the blind it closes the lantern blind at the top and it'll start turning the lights on to uh, approximately 20 percent um, for the strip lighting that's built into the lantern so that's what this does now i can't don't know if you can see the glow of the light but it's a, a faint white i believe it's on around 20 percent at the moment um, but once it gets dark i believe that's going to be a sufficient lighting level for their movie if not we can always adjust it um, to the customer's requirements and then it's ready to watch a movie in once movie time is over all they have to do um so there you can see that light now so once movie time is over all we do uh, on these switches we just hit that button there and it will just turn those lights off and we just leave the room and that's it it's ready for the next day's cinema room